So let's look at things that we can do with data. Because after all, machine learning is essentially programming with data. So, you know, when you don't have a particularly good idea of how a specific problem is explicitly solved, but you might have some fairly decent idea of examples of how those things were solved in the past, then this is exactly what you can use machine learning for. So this is one of the examples that some of you might have in your homes. If you have an Xbox, you might have a Kinect, and the Kinect essentially tracks where you are based on a fairly nice sensor, and then it uses computer vision to find out where you are, find out at which, which depth and all those, those things. So let's start with something very simple, collaborative filtering. So this is what collaborative filtering, this is what Netflix looked like maybe about a year or two ago before it had separations into different profiles. And you can see that things can go horribly wrong if you have two adults with different tastes and children watch the same things, you get kind of the worst of all worlds. This is what Netflix thinks I might like. I am not really sure that I like any of those movies besides this one here. Okay, this is my book recommendations on Amazon. And quite unsurprisingly, I have actually almost all of those books sitting on my shelf. And they are very nice books. And if you don't have them yet, you should get them. And the reason why it works is because it basically uses correlations between purchases, co-view, co-search, and related things to then infer whether you might like something. Okay. Um, now, here's another example of machine learning. And this is an example where essentially the machine learning sort of kind of broke the game. So those of you who don't recognize this, and it's probably most of you, this is a scene from Black and White. Black and White was a game uh, by Peter Molyneux. And you basically could play God. So this is always fun. And you had an avatar. In this case, well, the person has chosen a cow as an avatar. And that cow avatar would then try to behave in the same way as its master would. It would do this by essentially using classification to basically use logistic regression and infer you know, basically run a perception algorithm meant to infer whether something is properly in, in line with what people do. Now, the problem of what happened in there is that the classification problem didn't have a lot of regularization. And it actually became increasingly difficult over time to play this game because basically of overfitting. This is an example of where a machine learning algorithm, if not perfectly well implemented can actually do more harm than it does good. Um, here's another example. Uh, so I think Ralph Herbrich worked on that. Driver tires in Forza. So this is basically also for the Xbox. The idea is if you have different teams or you know, different players race against each other, wouldn't it be nice if you could race against your neighbor? But maybe you play at night and your neighbor plays in the morning. And so you will never really find a time when you're both up. So what you can do is you can basically train a driver tar. This driver tar will basically try to mimic your driving behavior as well as possible. Mimicking your driving behavior means if you drive into the walls, the driver tar will drive into walls. And then you can race somebody else's driver tar while you're playing, or vice versa. Or maybe you can have both of them race against each other. And this is kind of a nice feature to essentially let you know, people play with each other. This worked fairly well. Here's a really cool example of what happened um, just about a year ago. Let's see whether this actually plays. OK, yes, it does. Great. So what you see here is, well, basically a, a very, very old Atari game, Breakout. And well, this wouldn't be particularly uh, especially except for this freakishly behavior of that bottom bar. And what really happens is that they actually trained a neural network to learn how to play breakout. The cool thing about it is that the inputs were only the score, and other than that, just the pixels. And then they learned a re reinforcement learning controller, and if you had done this about two years ago, 
you would have been purchased for half a billion dollars by Google. So this is basically the DeepMind uh, team in London. It's pretty nice work. Okay. Um, yep. Here's another example of machine learning, spam filtering. So basically what you have is you have ham and spam and, well, basically you have a lot more spam than ham. And you want to be able to distinguish between those two types of emails. Now, in order to do this, you need to actually be able to infer you know, what the content of an email is. And the problem is that you may not necessarily have a lot of that explicit information, because most people don't bother about spam filtering. So hands up if you've spam filtered today. If you have not, go to your Gmail, AOL, or whatever, or Hotmail, or Yahoo Mail clients, and spam filter something. Flag messages that are not good. In doing so, you're actually helping the system achieve high accuracy, and you're reducing the amount of spam that you will be getting. So more succinctly, you will help yourself, but you will also help others this way. Spam filtering has a rather interesting property, namely that you have a highly asymmetric loss function. So for instance, if you think about it, the email that you got that you've been admitted into the PhD program at CMU, it's probably a really, really important email, right? And if you miss that one, it's bad, really bad. So you have a very, very high cost if this ends up in your spam folder. On the other hand, if you get one extra email about, well, would you not like to get the, some PhD degree from some random university in some random place where there's a lot of sun and not much else, um, you'll be mildly annoyed and you'll click on delete and that's it. So in other words, there's a high asymmetry between the emails that you lose and the emails that you get it and the spam extra that you get. 